Hey everyone, this is Build Series and I'm your host, Brittany Jones Cooper. The upcoming film, Lying and Stealing, tells the story of an art thief named Ivan and a calm woman named Elise, strangers who both get caught up in the enticing worlds of art and fame in Los Angeles. But when they get in a little too deep, the two come together to pull off the ultimate con that will hopefully set them free. Today I'm sitting down with stars Theo James and Emily Ratajkowski, but first, here's the trailer. So, what brings you here tonight? I'm an art consultant. What does that mean? The accomplished bank robber Louis Sutton was asked why he robbed banks. Sutton remarked, because that's where the money is. <laughs> if Sutton were alive today, he wouldn't be robbing banks. He'd be robbing the wealthy. That's very impressive. Bingo. I'm not gonna do this forever. I think I have two more than I'm done, then I'm out. It's adorable. Your father was into me for quite a bit. This seems to me like maybe you're trying to clean up one of Dad's messes. You know how to use that? I think it goes the other way. I want it. What are you talking about? Come on, you could use my help. I'm Marguerite. I'm Karen. Elise. You kids have a great time. You're such a cute couple. Thank, Thank you. you. Why are you following me? I'm the FBI. In the past three years, you and your pals have taken down over $75 million in black market art. What the? What do you want from me? <laughs> the man with the plan. This one is big. One more little job, and you and me are done. What are the options? My options are die or not die. OK. There's something you're not telling me. You gonna slip up. It might not be you, it might be a unstable girlfriend. Or a bipolar brother. There's always a crack. How about a moment of silence? How many more moments do you wanna do? Please put your hands together for Emily Ratajkowski and Theo James. Good morning, guys. Good morning. How are you? How are you doing today? Very good. Yeah. Good. How are you doing? Good. You guys have good weekends? Great weekend. I just got back from vacation, so I'm like, I'm having a great day. I did see that on your Insta. Where'd you go? Uh, Bermuda. <sighs> Hour and 45-minute flight. I'd never been. It's so nice. Jet blue? Uh-huh. Always. That's the one. The it was so beaches. easy. No, I was back like by 2 p.m. yesterday. It was a dream. The best. And I'm a fan. Um, yes, me too, actually. I was in Miami. Oh, I um, love it. Thank you. Uh, so I love that you came back because I'm excited to talk about this film. I got to check it out last night. And it is just like this sexy, but also thriller, sort of crime, and then funny also. Um, so take me through the casting process. How did this movie come come to you guys? Um, well, uh, yeah, it, it was Matt had this script a couple of years ago, and we were talking about it for a long time. Um, and then the script was developed in various stages, and then you know, we had the opportunity for to to meet Emily, and and Emily became a part of it, and then it went from there really. But it's um, the idea is we, we you know it's it's kind of has a, a touch of Soderbergh and 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 a little bit of you know those old heist slash neo noir movies of the seventies like uh, the Elliot Gould The Long Goodbye so yeah. What was that? What was it like for you? Yeah, I got the script. Um, I met with Matt and then I met with Theo and I just loved the um, sort of like not taking itself too seriously. I think that there's a lot of heist movies that make that mistake and there's a real dry sense of humor to this which I I loved. And did you guys know each other before this project? No. No, no. So what did you guys have to do to work on your chemistry? Because really, a lot of it is the tension between these two characters. Ooh. builds a lot of the... Oh. It's really important. Like I said, it's sexy, but it's not over sex. It's really about like you two interacting and building that kind of tension throughout. So what kind of work did you guys do together just to get that right? We kind of stared into each other's eyes, you know, made each other cry. Um, right, exactly. No, I mean, you kind of just have to hope that that's there really yeah. on the day. It's kind of, you can't really prep for it. I think also the characters are written they're both so strong and they really like know who they are. So that tension is there. You yeah. know, they, they don't, nobody wants to give in. And um, when they finally do, it feels like this really kind of big moment. Yeah, it's true. And and the, there's a love story element to it, I guess, but in a nice way, they're, they're totally independent characters yeah. driven by their own, you know, agendas and their own problems. So, so the, the main story is not, 
the kind of love angle. It's really about these two smart people who have got themselves into a hole and are trying to help each other dig themselves out of it. Yeah. Totally. I do love that. And their attraction is more based on the mental games they're playing with each other, which I love. Yeah. Like 100%. They're both really smart people. Um, so Ivan, tell me about him. What is his motivation, do you think? Uh, well, Ivan's kind of in debt to uh, someone, his father, his, his dad died with a lot of debt and he's trying to basically extradite himself from this eternal debt. But he's a, a great thief and he's uh, stealing these pieces of art from the wealthy, so not from, you know, um, museums or, or auction houses. He's, he's going into these people's houses that are very hyper wealthy in this world that we live in now with kind of the extremes of wealth and kind of taking them off the wall. Uh, you know, um, and then he meets this very smart hustler, aspiring kind of actress. And that's another thing that's great about the movie is that it has that kind of L.A. 70s vibe, which is very cool. Um, and they they basically team up to try and help each other. Yeah. Do you think he is the smartest guy in most rooms? Or do you think I think he, he would like he to is. think so. But yeah. no, I think that's probably a no, a hard no. <laughs> Emily's much smarter than me. And Elise. you mentioned that Elise is Elise, actress. Yes. I mean, Emily too. Yeah, so let's totally. talk about her her way of conning. What is her sort of vibe in the movie? Yeah, I mean, I think Elise has had like a rough go of it. And as a woman in Hollywood has especially had a rough go of it and, you know, has always really known where her power lies and found ways to sort of fool people and thinking that she's not as smart as she is or that she's completely something else. And um, I think a lot of women do that in general, maybe not quite as obviously like you see here on the poster of a blonde wig Elise wears many different physical disguises as well as uh, emotional disguises um, and she's been put in this really bad position where she can't be an actress anymore because she's one of her kind of wheeling and dealing things has gone wrong and she finds a way has a real genuine connection with someone which I think is something she hasn't had in a really long time um, and they team up to sort of save each other which is nice. And she does sort of experience a Me Too-like experience mm -hmm. in the film. Was that something that attracted you to the role, just given in our current climate? Yeah, I mean, more than any, yes, definitely the current climate, but more I was just like, this is an honest story. Yeah. This is something that, you know, like every woman, maybe not this specific exact thing, because it does have a little bit of an over-the-top quality to it, um, has experienced where, you know, they, they turn someone down and then all of a sudden they have consequences for something they never really wanted in the first place. Yeah. Did you have a favorite wig? The blonde. That one? Yeah. Was that your favorite one? I mean, it's hard. I did also love the red. There's a redhead moment. Like, when did you get like to wear a red bob. wig? I liked the bob. I Here's thought that the was thing really is, cute. like, I would love to be blonde, but, like, it's never going to happen. So there we go. That's have the you, moment. Have you ever thought about being a blonde in years past? Yes. Yeah? I'd like to have pink hair, honestly. Yeah. Like Switch it up. Like, green hair. <laughs> Theo, uh, did you ever put on her wigs, or did you have a favorite wig? Constantly, yeah, yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah, I do. I, I wear w wigs sometimes, and you know, dresses and things like in that. private, just in to private hang. Um, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I guess her, the wigs are that's an element of this kind of chameleon person, which is so interesting about Emily's character because she's a sh she's kind of a shapeshifter. She's moving through these crowds, and she knows that there's a kind of you know empty, superfluous nature to these producers and these wealthy art, you know, uh, crowds, but she knows how to play them. Let's yeah, they're both, they're both sort of doing that. They're very much in this world, but really outside of it. Yeah. And this world is so beautiful. The film is truly beautiful. Uh, tell me about some of the locations you shot out. Some of these homes are just stunning. Yeah, one of the homes was, um, the uh, was, wasn't it Sinatra's at one point? Do you remember yeah. that one? Yeah, it was a crazy, there were, we were all over LA. It was, yeah. it was very fun to really like see all these crazy different houses. And that was a big part of the, the, you know, the wrestling match when you're trying to raise money for, for an independent movie was, was making sure that we still made it in Los Angeles because it was, it felt like that was a big part of the story. And again, all the nods to those great noir, 70s yeah. noir and those heist movies, um, we really wanted to, to, so we kind of had to, you know, pull as many favors for the budget that we had as possible because, because it's hard to shoot in LA, but we were very adamant to do that. And I think it really helps as a result. You know, it had, LA has a very specific, as we all know, a very specific light and how that shows in the camera and, and, and the characters and the architecture. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there was also a house that um, Beyonce shot one of her music videos in. So really? there was that. Um, <laughs> I was walking around just like, oh my God. 
Um, that felt pretty special. So that's like the best marketing you could have ever given oh, for yeah. this film because yeah. everybody in the Beehive is like, yeah, so I'll watch this. Okay, so now I have to figure out which house it is. Yeah, just to look for like a piece of glitter on the floor that was on one of her dresses. Um, but you do mention that old Hollywood feel is definitely throughout. And I, I do love kind of the basis where the Willie Sutton is that thief who says, you know, I rob banks because that's where the money is. And when you look at our culture now, the, the prominence of art and the the number of people who have this very expensive art in their homes. I mean, does that change the way you guys, when you go into parties now, you're like, that's probably worth something. That's definitely a Picasso. Yeah, in a way, it makes <laughs> you kind of reconsider this, uh, you know, because I did, I'll be honest, we were talking about this before. Uh, Emily has some knowledge of art. I have very limited knowledge of art. But, you know, doing the film, you you have a little bit more of a window into it. You know, the, the one of the pieces that Ivan steals at the beginning is uh, Jeff Koons, you know, the very famous, the, the, the bunny or whatever it's mm -hmm. called, the rabbit. Um, and, you know, that recently sold, didn't it, for $91 million. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this idea of art and what it is and the kind of sycophants around it and and the value of art and whether it's real or not, I mean, it's, it's quite interesting. And, you know, the, this idea of these hyper-wealthy people who live on a different plane, who have these things hanging in their, in their you know, hallways. You know. Yeah, I think the movie really does showcase this sort of other world of like ridiculous op opulence. Um, and I think art is a part of it, but it's really, there's so many markets that like we don't even think about because the 1% is real. Um, and this isn't even talking about the 1%, but it's it's related. That market is just complete um, emperor wears no clothes. Like it's just made up, um, but it's really, really valuable. Like the numbers are astonishing. Theo mentioned you have a knowledge of art. So where does that come from? Uh, well, my dad is a painter. Um, uh, so I grew up in a very artistic household. And um, I went to UCLA for art for a year before I dropped out. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, I think, no. it's, I think it worked out. Yeah, it worked out. It was the right decision. Yeah, um, you, you're doing all right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I could have been like working at a gallery, though, in another life, which is weird to think about. Um, but um, yeah, no, and then I started to sort of buy some art. Like, uh, there's a really amazing community of young artists in LA, and so I've been lucky enough to to sort of be a part of that. Yeah. yeah. Have you learned then some stuff about art? You said you didn't know that much coming in. Nothing. No. Nothing. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, I did. Um, you know, he there's a he steals a wife. A wife. Um, what else? He steals a. My brain's gonna die now. Uh, he steals one of Hitler's uh, first portraits, which is kind of interesting because I didn't, I, I knew Hitler had painted, but you know, doing the research, you realize how much he'd painted and how fucking terrible he was um, as a painter. Um, yeah, so yes, a little and bit. And beyond the painter. Yes, yes, true. <laughs> like it was beyond just being an artist. Yes, of course. Um, so, so yes, in a, in a protracted way, yes. Thanks for pointing that out, just okay. for clarity. To clarify, <laughs> wasn't just that he was a bad artist. Um, so when you guys look at the film, do you have a scene that you just really enjoyed the most or that was the most fun to shoot or that you looked forward to shooting? Um, I really like, there's a scene when um, Emily's character, Lee, says to me, you know, I want to I wanna help, I want in. Yeah. Um, and then they, you know, he kind of says, well, I'm not sure. And she essentially says, fuck you. And then he has to go and kind of, you know, win win her round. But it's this kind of constant chess match, which is really interesting, I think, um, between the two. These people who kind of are very smart, they like each other, but they also know very well that the whole thing is a game, essentially. Yeah, I mean, that's definitely one of my favorite scenes because I think that they um, they don't even really, like, speak like normal people. It's sort of almost all in the song and dance way where they're just dancing around each other. And so that was really fun because there's these vulnerable beats, but most of it is them performing for each other. Um, but also, like, any scene I got to wear a wig. <laughs> Honestly. Um, no, there's a scene where um, Elise goes to the casino and it's um, sort of an important moment for her. And I feel like... You know, in films, it's so nice to have private moments for women. So I loved that. Did you guys think about the psychology of people like this who actually go in and can produce these cons? Like, how much of that was in the script and how much did you sort of have to, like, make up backstories about their history and what informed them? Well, it's quite heightened, isn't it? I mean, I think uh, I, th I think it's fairly breezy. So the, r the reality of it is you know, pushed. So I guess I guess there's not loads of research where I was sitting down being like, hmm, how would this guy steal this painting and put it in his jacket and then smoke a cigarette? Um, 
I mean, that doesn't happen. But uh, so yes, I th I th I think of course you do some research, but but it's heightened. It's it's not reality, I guess. But I will say, like in our industry, you do meet a lot of people who are kind of like faking it until they make it, and it's just like right under the surface like everything seems totally normal and then you're like what do you do though i mean i feel like even living in new york you meet so many people like that where you're like what do you do like it's a wednesday at 11 a.m and you're like chilling <laughs> um so, so you know yeah, like i so feel true. like in that way i sort of related to them in, in la there's so many people like that um and you kind of do wonder like what do these people do uh, during their not even for a living but like during the day, it's what funny. are they doing? I, it's true. I was walking on the Hudson yesterday, having a little walk, and we walked past a couple of two women talking, and happened to h overhear them. And she was like, "So, so, what's he like?" And, he, and uh, she was like, "Oh my God, yeah, he's amazing." He's like, "Okay, great. And what does he do?" And he's like, "That's the thing. He doesn't really do anything." Yeah. <laughs> it's an amazing little snippet of kind yeah. of hyper reality. I thought it was interesting. But what I like about them is they actually are playing the system. Like that's what's so cool about them is they're not just lazy people who have been like have a trust fund. They really are hustling and like I I relate to that. I think we all do. Like in this, you know, I dropped out of college, like I said. Um I've been winging it ever since and I think that a lot of people can relate to that. Um have you guys ever stolen anything? <laughs> yeah. I got in trouble when I was 12. Oh, you were 12. Or 13. I'm like, uh, actually, last year? No. Yeah. What did you steal? Um, I think, like, a, a shirt. Oh, shit. I know. Bad girl. That's a thing at that age, though, middle yeah. school. It's like a weird rite thank, of passage thank that girls you. go through. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. No, it gives you a real thrill, though. It really I does. Kinda, if it didn't feel, feel so serious when I got in trouble, I probably would still be doing it. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. Yeah, exactly. You're like, <laughs> but not That's if I didn't get <laughs> Uh, no, I'm too. I think I'm too British. Uh, the only time I remember, I came out of a supermarket once with a trolley full of stuff, and I realised I, you know, absentmindedly walked out without paying for it, and I went back in and paid for it. Oh, I should just put it in the car. I have to tell Isn't you, I fun, stole yeah. a bandana once from Hobby Lobby, and nice. I got so stressed out about it, I threw it out the car window on the way home. I couldn't even, couldn't yeah. even get home with it. I was so stressed. It was not worth <laughs> the anxiety. Just to be clear, it's really not worth it, which is why I don't. I don't know. You have to try. I mean, or you don't, but. <laughs> I'll don't be trying it today. That's the headline. Don't, don't you have try to this. try like, shoplifting. No, 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 I'm kidding. <laughs> so, what else is going on with you guys? You have this film coming out, but what other projects? I know you guys are both working and have like so many other things going on. Uh, I'm flying back tomorrow to finish a um, uh, Jane Austen um, thing, which is really interesting. Mm. Yeah. It's set in the 1920s. It's. Uh, the same writer um, as the guy who did, do you remember the original, uh, you may not remember this, but it was very big in Britain, the original Colin Firth, um, Pride and Prejudice. Oh, yes, yeah. I do. He was so good looking in that. <laughs> Hunky motherfucker. In the Hunky Colin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but you know. um, yeah, I am. Um, I've been working a lot on my own line in Amarada, um, which just expanded into laundry and uh, ready to wear. So that's exciting. And then I have a project that will hopefully be going um, at the very end of the year that I'm actually producing as well. So it's exciting. I really am trying to get more involved with behind the camera. For sure. And I would imagine like with your social media following, you have a lot of things coming your way. So yeah. what is it that attracts you to a project or just an opportunity? Um, I think it's just about the individuals behind it. Like, I really make it a priority to work with people that I like and that I think are smart and interesting. And, um, you know, more and more, that's become the priority for me. So, life short. Absolutely. Yeah. Steal things. Exactly. Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> I'm like, no, please. <laughs> well, before we go, we do have a couple of questions. Uh, who do we have first? Hi. Uh, my question's for Theo. I actually promised quite a few people I would ask this. How did it feel being in a movie called How It Ends, even though we don't really know how it ends? Oh, yeah. Um, tricky. Yeah, it doesn't really end that movie. Um, so, um, yeah, I think the idea is that there's a continuation of the story, potentially. So that's why they ended it like that. Yeah. I don't know. I saw it, and I felt like it's probably going to end soon. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. based on the last shot. <laughs> yeah. That's just my two cents. Yeah, they were definitely going to die. <laughs> yeah. um, and last question. Hi, we have an online question from our site, buildseries.com. Were there any fun moments filming this? No fun moments. No, it's very <laughs> intense, Terrible. very hard. Yes, um, that's a very big question and a general question. Yeah, there's fun moments all the time. I mean, filming in Sinatra's house, filming in L.A. We did a great scene in 
that bar. Where? What part of town was that? That bar that was kind oh, of. Oh, we were in um, Highland Park. Is that how? Oh, or, and your apartment was in Koreatown. Oh, okay. What about the pool scene? That was in um, Highland Park. That was Highland Park. Okay, cool. We went all over. We were like East Side, West Side, everything. Yeah, and I think filming in LA for me, not being, you know, you you live there, but not being a, a kind of a local, uh, was interesting because I got to see parts of LA that I didn't even know existed. Yeah. Did you guys actually play pool, and if so, who won? Oh man. So I have this thing where, like, I think I'm really good at pool, <laughs> and I'm really not. And um, I was kind of like, oh no, like I'll be good. And then um, actually, we did. I did have. Um, one beer when we were, and I did get progressively better, don't you think? Yeah, it's true, yeah, true, you right? did, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. so obviously another terrible lesson I'm teaching the children <laughs> yeah. at home. Um, no, yeah. but I, that was, that was, I think you definitely won, though. Yeah, I'm pretty bad as well, but I think that is a good lesson in life, you know, yeah. with everything, life is better once you've had a drink. I do think it's the lesson of moderation. One beer, your game levels up. Right. Three to five, it gets worse. Sloppy. Yeah. Right? So you, that little... I think yeah. that's an important lesson to teach the youth. And do you, do you wake so up and have a beer, or do you wait until the evening? That's the question, really. Isn't it? That will make more sense when you watch the film, yeah. uh, which is currently available on DirecTV, and Lying and Stealing, all, Stealing also hits theaters on July 12th. Please put your hands together for Emily Ratajkowski and Theo James. <laughs>